Hi guys, it's Floorjobe here, and today I have a very, very special video for you guys. Uh, but before I get into all that, I would like to introduce to you all my best friend, my emotional support dog, Luna. And Luna is a Great Pyrenees, which is actually a giant dog breed. She's a year and a half old right now and around 75 pounds, which believe it or not, is actually kind of on the smaller side for a Great Pyrenees. Uh, yeah. But in a few days, me and Luna will be going on one of our biggest adventures together. We are going to be moving across the country, traveling 1,266 kilometers from Halifax, Nova Scotia to Toronto, Ontario. This will be Luna's third flight, so she is a veteran, she's a seasoned flyer, and I thought I would take this opportunity to teach you guys a little bit about how I prepare Luna for our flights together, and also my tips and tricks for flying with an extra large emotional support dog. So my first tip is to do pre-flight sensitivity training with your dog. Even the best trained dogs can act out in stressful and unfamiliar situations. And the airport is full of strange noises, machines, and crowds of people that can even make the best trained dog a little bit anxious and afraid. So a great way to prepare for your flight is to do some sensitivity training with your dog beforehand. So something I like to do with Luna to get her used to big crowds before we go to the airport is to go somewhere busy. Uh, for us, we usually pick a local mall and we'll go there during a busy hour and just do some training exercises. Uh, another thing that I highly recommend is getting your dog used to the sounds of planes taking off and landing. So there's a ton of great YouTube videos um, online. You can just type in plane noises or plane ASMAR and what I'll do is I will get my dog and give her a treat that she really enjoys, maybe something like this peanut butter Kong here, and get her all set up to listen to some plane noises. And what this does it get, is it gets her used to those noises, so that way when she's sitting in a plane and suddenly a large machine hum comes on, she isn't going to bark and freak out. She's going to already be used to hearing that, and it's just going to make the journey a lot less stressful for her. So, in my opinion, one of the number one most reliable ways to ensure your pet has a good flying experience is to tire them out beforehand. So, for me and Luna, we'll be going to the um, park, we'll be going on a run, maybe we'll go to the waterfront, just doing as much activities as she enjoys, getting her active, that way on the flight she's really tired and she doesn't really want to do anything. Because a tired dog is a well-behaved dog. Um, I would also highly recommend that you stop feeding your pet a couple hours before your flight as well as monitor their water intake and what that does is that just ensures that your pet isn't going to get um, air sick or maybe have an accident on the flight and it ensures everything goes as smoothly as possible. Another tip I have and this is completely optional always up to your discretion whether you want to give your dog a medication or not before flying but my vet actually doesn't recommend medications. This is a natural nutritional supplement. It is called Zilkeen, and it is a supplement that can reduce chronic stress as well as situational stress in your dog, and it contains a natural ingredient derived from a milk protein, uh, and it's essentially a protein from a mother's milk that's known to re promote relaxation in newborn puppies. Uh, so I give this to Luna every time we fly, and the reason I like this medication is it's non-drowsy, which is really important when you have a huge dog, because if you have a really big dog, you definitely don't want to have them so tired they're asleep, and you need to carry them around the airport. Uh, and also, because this is all natural, it isn't really known to have any adverse side effects. It's very, very safe, which is really, really important to me as a dog mom. Uh, one of my last tips is to always arrive for your flight a little bit early. Uh, this ensures everything goes as smoothly as possible. You have time to make sure your dog has that one last bathroom trip before you get on your flight, uh, and you're not stressed. So now that I've explained my pre-flight tips, let's get into what I bring with me when I fly. I always bring Luna's emotional support dog harness, uh, and this just identifies her as an emotional support dog when we're going through the airport. Uh, this uh, harness isn't actually sold as uh, a service dog or emotional support dog vest. It's a hiking vest. I got it from Mountain Equipment Co-op, and it's actually a backpack. 
and I love this for flying because it allows your dog to carry some of their own stuff, which is awesome if you have a big dog. Uh, and yeah, I just bought these emotional support dog tags off Amazon and sewed them on. They're on Velcro so I can have uh, it on or off at my own discretion, which I also really enjoy. So one really cool thing about this harness is that it comes with two water bladders. When I fly, I usually only bring the one and I will fill it up after we go through security and have it with me throughout the whole journey to ensure Luna is hydrated and refreshed. So, pop that in there. Uh, the next thing I will always bring with me when I fly is poop bags, pretty self-explanatory. I will also bring a bag of treats to keep Luna happy and praise her throughout the flight as well as distract her a bit. Uh, also when I fly it's super super important this is a must do to always have your dog's ESA letter and their veterinary records. I always have this when I fly with Luna it stays in her bag at all times. It is I've never actually been asked for it but it's really good just to have it just in case uh, it's always good to be prepared. I'll pack her medication in her harness. Uh, I also have this really cool collapsible dog bowl that has a little clip, which I will clip to the back of it. Uh, one other thing I will bring, and it's actually kind of funny, the first time I flew, I was really, really nervous going through security with this that they would like come and take it away and be like, you aren't allowed to have a dog bone. Uh, so every time I fly with a dog bone, I will get it from the pet store and I will keep it in its original packaging. Just that way it's easy to explain to any security if they have any questions. And this is a, a special treat for Luna. She doesn't get these too often. And so when I give it to her on the flight, it always keeps her nice and distracted and happy. So I will pop that in her bag. One last thing I bring that isn't always mentioned when you think about flying with your dog is I will bring a lint roller. A lot of times when I'm flying, uh, Luna, she's a really, really big, white, fluffy dog, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, she sheds. So when I am flying, if there's other passengers who are seated beside us and they're wearing black pants, or if after we leave the flight and as I'm getting up, I leave the seat and I see it's covered in dog fur, I always make sure to offer my lint roller or roll it myself just to be considerate to everyone else who's flying uh, because I just think it's a nice thing to do. So I will pop that in her bag. And as you can see, everything that I've just mentioned, I've put in the bag as I've been talking to you guys. This thing is amazing. There's room for like a ton more stuff in here, but this is really all she needs to fly. So I love this bag for flying. One last little detail I didn't mention about it is it has this cool handle at the top of the harness that just lets you have a good hold of your dog in the airport. So yeah, that is all of my pre-flying tips as well as what I bring with me when I fly with my large emotional support animal. Uh, so now the rest of the video is just going to be kind of a little vlog style of showing you guys how me and Luna get through the airport. Uh, wish us happy travels. See you guys later. So Air Canada was nice enough to let me film us going through security. So in a second, you're going to see that. And the only thing you need to know is your dog should be able to sit and stay as you go through the okay, awesome. checkpoints. All right, Luna. Wait. You can pass it around. Oh, okay. And then when you come through, you can take the video. Yeah. All right. Okay, Luna, come here. You want a treat? Come here, you can come. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. Good job. Hey guys, so we just got through security. Everyone was very, very nice. They were kind enough to let us film so we could show you guys all what it's like to go through security with a service animal. And yeah, we're getting ready to board the plane now. So I'll see you guys later. So I am here on the flight with Luna and she's looking really comfortable. I've used that strap that I bought to 
attach her in really nicely. And yeah, we're excited and ready to go. Air Canada was nice enough to give us a full empty row. So she has plenty and plenty of space. And yeah, we're all ready to travel to Toronto. I'm in Toronto now and I just wanted to say that Luna did great. She had an amazing flight. A ton of people as they were deboarding the plane came up to me and were like, I didn't even realize there was a dog on board. She was so quiet. So I guess all my pre-training worked because she did wonderful. Our flight was amazing. Everyone for, from Air Canada was so, so nice and so, so kind and accommodating to us. Uh, they were nice enough to let me film me going through security. Um, and they were actually nice enough to give us the whole bro to ourselves, which was amazing. Luna had so much space. I'd highly recommend flying with them if you have an ESA. They're really, really great. That's not Luna barking in the background, by the way. That's another dog. <laughs> it's a madhouse. It's Toronto Airport. Come on, Luna. Let's get out of here. Let's go home. What do you think? Oh my goodness, Luna, who's that? Who's that, Luna? 